Last February, a single moment devastated an entire city. No matter where Seahawks fans watched from, whether on the sideline, Section 420, or a neighborhood party, it affected them all. Second down and goal, Russell looks, throws inside. Oh my God, it's picked off. Oh no! When Russell Wilson made that pass, I remember my mouth just dropping open and we're just staring at the screen just we can't believe that just happened. I don't think I said anything for 10 minutes. It was just kind of the hands on the back of the head, just kind of just pacing the room like what, what have we done? Complete devastation. Couldn't believe it. I mean, it was just completely stunned. We just kind of sat there and stared at the TV hoping we weren't seeing what we thought we were seeing. Just a shot to the heart of every Seahawks fan. I still don't want anything to do with that final play. You asked me about the final play. I don't want to talk about the final play. What happens with strong emotions, whether it's, it's bereavement or anger or depression or anxiety, is that the emotions get so heightened that people can't always think straight. Um, and so they get caught up in the emotion and they kind of sit in it and can't get out of it. Seattleites needed an outlet for their pain. The Seattle Times provided one, publishing letters written by fans. I think when it comes to the 12th man, there's really this sense of solidarity. Putting a letter out there is not necessarily speaking for that unit, but speaking to that unit. Just as on a team, you know, you try to kind of lift each other up. I think that's really what that's about. You don't throw in the towel. You don't give up on yourself or your team. You accept that things didn't go the way you wanted, and you utilize the strength that comes with adversity to prepare for the next challenge. When you lose a game as big as this, it is a personal loss. But I love this team. I'm a diehard 12, and I trust in these coaches and players. I got to kind of release this some way. Do I punch a wall a number of times? Or do I sit down and write a stupid little Craigslist post? I opted for the Craigslist posts. Looking to buy or rent a time-traveling DeLorean, the travel back one week to try to talk to Seahawks coach Pete Carroll. Please hear me clearly when I say, run the football. And he'll say, run the football, got it. With all due respect, coach, I don't think you do. So yeah, I'm looking for a time-traveling DeLorean, power windows and locks preferred. Part of cognitive behavioral therapy, one of the main tools is, is uh, journaling and therapeutic writing. What writing does, I think, is it helps to kind of kick in a higher processing so that you can process those emotions and actually work your way through them and get past them. I guess like a lot of people do it after like a breakup or if someone has died or something like that. Maybe it's kind of depressing and immature that I did the same thing after a football team lost a game. The letters kept coming. The Seattle Times wasn't the only recipient. It's been overwhelming. I've received more than any other time, any other season, you know, postseason uh, kind of response uh, I, ever from, for our, my coaching career. There was bags and bags around us that we're trying to get through. 99% of it has a lot of compassion. Just shows the great length that we have with, with uh, in our 12s. I saw the picture that Pete Carroll tweeted out of just the mounds of letters that he got after the Super Bowl. And I was like, hey, mine's in there somewhere. When we wrote that letter in, it was kind of trying to move on. Just the hopes of letting them know fans are still going to stand behind you. Give a little love to the 12s so they know we love them. We're all going through it together. It feels good to have unity and to have people to grieve with. The letters came from across Washington, from an executive assistant in Snoqualmie to an eight-year-old from Marysville, even one from an actor in Mount Vernon. What made me want to write it was Monday morning quarterbacking is uh, something that uh, a lot of people do, but not us. We're, we're better than that. Dear Coach Carroll, my daughter Natalie wrote you the enclosed letter and drew you a picture. She was disappointed in the loss, but it allowed me to have a great talk with her and use it as a teaching moment. I was able to explain to her that we don't always win every time, but that you have to keep trying and never give up. I wish I could convey how much you guys helped me just by being who you are as a team. 
It sounds so simple and silly that being a fan could make that much of a difference in someone's life. I wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Fans are fleeting, they blow with the wind. Fans can be loyal, but they can also be fickle, fair weather, and phony. What the players and coaches need right now is the confidence that their teammate, the 12th man, not the fan, will be there to pick them up, dust them off, and let them know that we are right here by your side. And we aren't going anywhere.